Good morning, all. Happy sixth Sunday of Easter. Let us sing together our opening hymn, which is the song, All Are Welcome, that can be found in your worship aid. We're going to be singing verses one, four, and five. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall and divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone. To heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger, all are welcome. All are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers and faith and songs of let this house proclaim from floor to rafter. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. I'm hoping Father Randy can hear me. Are we having a tech issue? I can hear, but I don't know if I'm on or not. I believe you are. Okay. Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to St. Blaise and the sixth Sunday of Easter. Let us continue this time of prayer together in the same way that we live each day of our life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. In Easter joy, let us sing God's praise in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God and on earth, peace to people, to people of good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God and on earth, peace to people, to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people, to people of good For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God and on earth, peace to people, to people of good Let us pray. Lord God, your son did not leave us orphans, but sent us the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with us forever. May your spirit keep us steadfast in suffering, faithful in bearing witness, and joyful in hope. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us now be attentive to the word of God. This is going to be a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. I think I'm waiting for Crystal to switch me over. 
I, I believe you already are, Mary. Am I switched? Okay. We're good to go. Thank you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for your reason of hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. So put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a proclamation of Psalm 66. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Cry out in joy to the Lord, all peoples on earth. Sing to the praise of God's name, proclaiming forever. Tremendous your deeds for us. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Leading your people safe through fire and water, bringing their souls to life. We sing of your glory. Your love is eternal. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Hearken to me as I sing my love of the Lord, who answers the prayer of my heart. God leads me in safety from death unto life. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. To the Lord. Lord be with you. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you will know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Perhaps it's because I grew up between the altruistic 1960s and the selfish 1970s that instead of hearing these words of Jesus, I tend to hear the voice of Peter Frampton singing, I'm in you, you're in me. I'm not really sure exactly what it means to be in Christ or in the Holy Spirit. And yet, I believe with all my being that that is how we, all of us, live, move, and have our being. And yet at times, we feel quite the opposite. Disenfranchised, disappointed, hurt, or rejected. Someone, and usually it's someone who loves us, says or does something we find to be very hurtful. Only one who really loves us could hurt us that deeply. And we want to get back at them, either turning on them in some way or by hurting ourselves so that they really know how much they've hurt us. And yet, all the while, we know deep in our heart that despite how we're feeling in that moment, the offending person does indeed love us. And that is the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. As we heard in our reading today from Peter, it's better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. Yes, we've all been hurt by those we love, and frankly, we've all hurt those we love. In the scriptures, the figure of Satan symbolizes the power of accusation. No wonder it is so difficult for us to really develop a mature sense of evil, because by the time we are five years of age, we've already been summoned repeatedly through the tribunal of parents and siblings teachers and peers for not measuring up. 
we begin to internalize that criticism. And pretty soon we don't even need anyone to accuse us. We're quite good at doing it ourselves. We hear that inner voice saying things to us like, can't you do anything right? When are you gonna get it all together? Why did you think that was a good idea? And the cycle continues when we project those internal voices outward toward others. The sacred scriptures and especially the resurrection of Jesus are about breaking that cycle of accusation. During Jesus' ministry, when Jesus is asked, why do you dine with sinners? He responds by saying, it is because they are ill. You don't drag illness into a courtroom. You treat it with medicine, care, compassion. To those wishing to destroy a woman caught in the act of adultery, Jesus, her advocate, says, let the one among you who is without sin cast the first stone. And when Simon the Pharisee mumbles under his breath at a dinner party about the kind of woman who is washing Jesus' feet, Jesus tells Simon that her mistakes mean little when compared to all the love she has demonstrated. Jesus, aware of that persistent spirit of accusation in our lives, promises to send us the advocate, somebody to take our part, to remind us of God's grace when we are battered by accusations from without and from within. Amid such juridical bedlam, we find strength through God's Holy Spirit within us, reminding us that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. So may we love and be lovers without counting the cost. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Confident in God's love, in the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus, we now make our prayer to the Lord. And so we pray. May the church unflinchingly proclaim the good news of Jesus by our words and our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the leaders of our world see beyond prejudice and self-righteousness, building up the common good of all people. We pray to the Lord. For our prayer. May peace with justice fill our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we learn to love the Lord and keep his commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we hold on to truth compassion, patience. Help us to avoid gossip, 
bitterness, and meanness in word or action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May hope be our constant companion and the source of all our joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Holy Spirit fill us that we may love courageously, serve selflessly, and preach compassionately. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may all who have died, our family, our friends, and those who have no one to pray for them, may they all live now in the reign of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. And gathering all of our prayers into one, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Ever living God, help us to celebrate our joy in the resurrection of the Lord and to express in our lives the love we celebrate. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And unlike last week, this week we have lots of announcements. The announcements will probably be about as long as the homily, maybe longer, so hold on. Um, I know that um, you probably already heard, you received the email from the Archbishop this week informing us that we are preparing to uh, reopen our churches and come back for worship. The Archbishop is giving us permission to do so, and that is the key word. Um, he gave us some options when to start back, and in consultation with our staff and parish council, um, we have decided here at St. Blaise that we will be, be opening up on May the 29th. Um, we're doing so because that keeps us in conformity with Governor Whitmer's uh, stay-at-home order, which continues through May 28th. So the first public mass we will be having here at St. Blaise will be on Saturday at 4 o'clock on May 30th for the Solemnity of Pentecost. So those who are coming, wear your red. Try to remember that. Now, I have to tell you that the Mass is going to look and feel very different from what you're used to, and I'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, I stress that we have permission to have Mass. Um, we're not required. You're not, there is no obligation. In fact, the Archbishop was quite clear in two places in his letter that uh, he has dispensed all Catholics in the Archdiocese from participating at Sunday Mass through Labor Day. So you are under no obligation to come to that Mass. And specifically, he mentioned, um, and I want to quote his words so that you hear them, quote, those older than 65 years of age, the recommended age by the Center for Disease Control with a comprised health condition, or those who are caring for the sick in any way are encouraged to stay home. Anyone who is ill, who has a temperature, a cough, a fever, etc., should definitely stay home 
as an act of justice to the whole community, end quote. Um, so even though we will be here for mass, you are not obligated to be with us. And those who are elderly, those who have a pre-existing condition, especially one that is vulnerable to COVID-19, um, such as respiratory illnesses or heart illnesses, please, for your sake, for the sake of others, stay home. Um, speaking very frankly, um, and let me be blunt about this, um, I really think it's too early for us to be coming back. And um, if I were simply a member of St. Blaise, if I was a lay person and not the pastor of St. Blaise, I would not be coming back to Mass at the end of May. I would sit back and wait for several weeks, probably until July 4th or later, before I'd even consider. Um, so do take that seriously. You have the dispensation. And know that you don't feel compelled to be here. Um, if you have any reservation at all, you can stay home. And we're going to continue to show the Mass on Facebook. So you'll be able to see the Mass from, from the parish. Um, so just please be open to that and pray about that in, in the next couple of weeks ahead. What's a few things that are going to look different for when you, if you do choose to come to Mass are these. Um, you will have to wear a mask or a face covering like a scarf over your nose and mouth. When I say you have to, I mean mandatory, I mean required, I mean you're not getting in the building without one. Okay, I, I can't put it any more, any more bluntly than that. Um, you'll have to wear a mask. The only exceptions to that will be the clergy and the musicians because for the most part, we are more than six feet away from anyone uh, throughout the liturgy. However, I can tell you that during this week, I'm gonna be going over to the church and practicing with my mask and the microphone to see if it's possible for me to wear a mask. I would prefer to wear one for your sake. Um, however, I have a feeling with the microphone and the mask, it's not gonna to work too well. Um, the other exception to wearing a mask are children under the age of two. Now, again, I'm not a parent, but if I had a child under the age of two, I'm not too sure I'd be in a hurry to bring them um, to church this early Given the, given the pandemic, but that's, that's a parental choice. Um, but but they, would, they, they would not have to wear a mask if, if they're under the age of two. The church itself um, can only be at 25% capacity. Um, now, the nice thing about St. Blaise is we have a nice large worship space. Um, so unlike some smaller churches that don't see as many, uh, who are going to have to have an RSVP system or give out tickets. Um, we're not going to need to do that. I think given the space of our church, we'll be okay. However, um, we will be using the social center as an overflow because once we hit a certain number, roughly around 200, 225, we're going to have to send others to the social center and we'll simulcast the liturgy. So simply be aware of that. We have to practice social distancing. So you can sit together in your family grouping, but there needs to be four chairs between you and the next party. Four chairs is just a little more than six feet. So be aware of that. Um, we, we, can't all, we can't all crowd together. We have to practice social distancing, that the same social distancing will be enforced for uh, the communion procession. It'll be enforced as you come into the church. Uh, there won't be any time to socialize in the gathering space, you'll need to come in, get your worship aid, go right to your place. Even more importantly, at the end of Mass, um, we need to proceed in an orderly spaced out departure from the church. Again, no stopping to socialize or congregate in the back of the church. Go straight out into the parking lot. Once you're doing what you do in the parking lot, I, I have no control over that or no say of that, but inside the church, we can't be stopping in little groups to talk to each other. We have to maintain the social distancing of six feet apart. Um, some other changes to keep in mind. Uh, we cannot take up a collection. So those of you who've been at Blaze for a, a long time know that we have the collection boxes that we used to use. Those will be back out. 
And so your envelope and weekly gift will go in those collection plates. If you don't feel comfortable coming to mass, again, you can mail in your, your offertory. We greatly appreciate that. Or even better, sign up for online giving. Um, the, the practice of giving the precious blood of Christ at communion time has been temporarily suspended. Um, actually, the entire procedure for coming to Holy Communion has to be altered. And watch this space because in the coming days, um, we'll have more information about how communion is going to be done. Um, Crystal is even working on a video on how to go to Mass at St. Blaise um, in this time of the pandemic. So um, watch for that video. We're hoping to have it up sometime, probably around or just after um, next week. So it takes us some time to put that together. Um, but watch the space for more information. Mass and other liturgical ministers. Um, you'll be getting a phone call from Dr. Mary Dumb. Uh, she will be going over and meeting with you all the new procedures. She'll be doing that little by little. So, you know, if you don't get a call this week or whatever, don't, don't panic. Um, we're going to start very small with, with specifically those who are going to be on the certain week. And we'll meet with those and until people see how it works and how it flows, um, we'll, then, then we'll have a better, a better understanding of, of, of how we're doing it and why we're doing it. So um, just be aware of that. Again, um, to, to wrap this up, a reminder that even though we are opening the church for mass beginning the weekend of the 30th and 31st, you are under no obligation if you are elderly, if you are ill, if you simply do not feel safe, you don't need to be here. It's okay. You have an ob you, you, the obligation has been substantiated, has been um, given to you through Labor Day that you don't have to be here. So, so please um, just use your best judgment and do bring a face mask. Um, otherwise, you'll be disappointed when you get to the doors of the church and we have to tell you, you can't come in. Just Face masks, face coverings are obligatory. Um, there's a lot more behind all this that I can't go into in this brief time. So continue to watch this space for more announcements. Lastly, a reminder for those who like to prepare for worship. Um, next Sunday is not the seventh Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday is the Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. So those are the readings to prepare for. That is the liturgy we will be um, sending out. And um, if all goes well, next Sunday, we'll be doing this from church. Um, so join us at 11 o'clock next week for the Solemnity of, Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. Okay. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit continuing to rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord and loving one another as Christ has loved us, we go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to continue uh, for just a, a brief moment longer to lead us through sung prayer. So there are three more songs that can be found in your worship aid. Glory and praise to our God, if you love me, and I know that my Redeemer lives. So I'm going to start with glory and praise to our God. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. 
need is wisdom, he strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. For the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his grace. Every moment of every day, our God is waiting to save. Always ready to seek the lost, to answer those who pray. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. For if you love me, I'm going to be leading us through verses five, six, and seven. If you love me, keep my commandments. Love one another as I've loved you. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in me and I will live in you. I will send you forth as witness. Believe in me, and I will be your strength. If you love me, keep my commandments. Love one another as I've loved you. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in me and I will live in you. I will never live. If you or fight, believe in me, and I will bring you home. If you love me, keep my commandments. Love one another as I've loved you. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in the love that flows from the heart of God. Live in me, and I will live in you. I will praise you on the last day. Believe in me and have eternal life. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
Love one another as I loved you. Believe in the love that flows from the heart of God. Believe in the love that flows from the heart of God. And lastly, to conclude our service for this morning, an Easter joy, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives on the last day. I shall rise again, and in my flesh I shall see God. On the last day I shall rise again. I shall see my Savior's face. And my own eyes shall behold my God. On the last day, I shall rise again. I know that my Redeemer lives. On the last day, I shall rise again. And in my flesh I shall see God on the last day I shall rise again. Within my heart is hope my hold that in my flesh I shall see my God. On the last day, I shall rise again. I know that my Redeemer lives. On the last day, I shall rise again. And in my flesh, I shall see God. On the last day, I shall rise again. I hope everyone has a great morning.